we're at a real turning point in our world in terms of what the world can sustain, uh, the quality of our environment, its impact on where we can live and how we can live. It's probably the biggest change for the whole world that we have ever seen in the time of civilization. So that within itself is a momentous thing with many, many dimensions. And I could certainly spend several of these sessions just speaking about that. But somehow that has triggered a response from those races in the universe who want to play a part in our world or have an influence in our world, which began in its mature phase perhaps 80 years ago, but is now moving ever more quickly and having ever greater impact. And certainly tens of thousands, maybe millions of people around the world have seen their craft flying in the skies. And some of the people have had direct contact, um, which is a pretty important thing to consider. So this is really something that you know, is beyond our control. It's outside the normal realm of our concerns or what we think is important in life or how we consider our future and our destiny. Because our future and our destiny are being shaped for us by the evolution of the world and by our own evolution, which are greater forces that are far beyond our social consciousness, our academic views, and so forth. Uh, we live for the moment primarily, maybe the short term, but the long-term events of life, what I call the long game, are really the things shaping us now in an accelerating manner, and will continue to do so as we proceed. And within that, there are important choices for us to make as individuals, and ultimately as a whole people in the world. This is our world of origin. We have evolved here. It is our purpose and destiny to serve this place and to serve the growth and evolution of humanity as it now faces its greatest challenges and with those challenges, opportunities. So, so, so getting more specific then, what are these actual world changes taking place right now? Overall, the world is heating. It is heating up very powerfully in an accelerated manner. Something we have never had to face before as the whole world. Certainly has happened regionally and locally in time. And this is presenting with us a great challenge of how we are going to live in this changing world. How are we going to organize ourselves, protect ourselves, and keep ourselves from fighting and struggling over the remaining resources? Because in a heating world, so many of the primary resources that we depend upon will be under great, great stress. Mm -hmm. And I know people, whether they think about these things or not, are feeling this kind of stress because, you know, we think about things at one level, but at another level, we are actually feeling things that are going on around us. And while we may have very strict ideas about how we regard our circumstances or how we see the world, we're still impacted by the change that is going on in the world. And the change in our physical health, our emotional health is being impacted by this change. You can see this in the growing anxiety and concern that people have. And then add to that, we have a worldwide pandemic, which is really not over yet. Perhaps it's become silent for a time. So we're being impacted by the world in powerful ways that are outside our scheme and our understanding and our plans and goals. And we're having to adapt to that as best we can. And we're living in a dynamically changing world right now. Dynamically meaning it is changing in its own ways beyond even the impact we have had on it ourselves. So this is a powerful and not an easy time to be in the world, but I feel it is the time we were meant to be in the world. It is not a comfortable situation. It is not happening according to our hopes, wishes, and beliefs. But life never happens according to our hopes, wishes, and beliefs. So we are living in a real world-changing environment. And that, for many people, will call out of them a greater sense of purpose, meaning, and service in the world. And um, that is its potential. That is its opportunity. Let's turn then to the other big event, which is this event of contact. Uh -huh. so, so what is this and, and why is it taking place? Well, contact is going to be occur eventually. It's our destiny to emerge into a universe of intelligent life. And it will not happen because of our, you know, very limited journeys into space. Our, our planet has obviously been observed for a long time. And those forces who are in the world today have probably been observing us and learning from us for a long time. When you consider that we're broadcasting out into space 
mindlessly our wars, our conflicts, our dilemmas, our impact upon each other and the world, you can see how this could promote really not just visitation, but intervention. And an intervention that is not simply for our benefit, but an intervention that serves the purposes of others, purposes that those who are visiting our world are not revealing to us, who are here without our permission, who are engaging with people and having an impact on many, many things beyond our awareness and agreement. So this is what happens in a world that is very valued by others when you consider our world biologically rich, beautiful, rare in the universe of fair and planets. I mean, we don't realize the wealth of this world that we sit upon and how livable it really is. Uh, viewed from the outside, it's a gem in the universe, certainly. And we are destroying it or undermining its value at an alarming rate. And I feel that this is why intervention is occurring now. And there's another reason for this, is that we have created a technological foundation of trade, communications, power, resources, everything that our technology has demonstrated connecting the world that other races can use for their benefit. And that is why this didn't happen 100 years ago or 500 years ago. Um, visitation to the world has certainly been happening through, for decades, centuries, and millennia. But the presence of these forces in the world now in the last 80 years since the last World War, has grown and become quite pronounced. So much so that those parts of our secret government are concerned with it primarily, and something that the, the public in general really has no notion of. So I feel it's very important that I bring this message to people. It is a message of urgency, and it is a message of profound importance in terms of our freedom and future going forward. But it also represents the consequence of us emerging into a larger arena of life. For think of this, that the universe around it is not a human universe. This is not, this is not represented in our movies, where it's human characters with masks on them. These are totally different races from very different worlds with very different beliefs and orientation. So we are an isolated tribe in a vast universe. In fact, sometimes I describe the, our world as big as it is, is like a grain of sand on a beach as far as the eye can see. That's the expanse, if we can grasp that. I don't know how else to describe its immensity, except in terms like that, that we are emerging into one small part of that universe, not the whole thing, but we are now engaged with others who are here for their own purposes. And this is a calling for action and unity and awareness, I think, almost beyond any other consideration. Mm. That and the welfare of our planet as a habitable place to live represent to me the two most important emphasis that we could have and will have as we go forward. And it's interesting, and I've, I've learned from you know, Native American history and what we know about how their seers knew that something of this magnitude was going to come at some point, not by the day or the month or the year necessarily, mm -hmm. but there were the wisest amongst them realized that something was going to strike the world or their world as they knew it and change it utterly. So uh, there are people in our world, and perhaps you're one of them, who's more noetic, more have a sense mm -hmm. of the larger picture of life, more greater interest in what happens in the world at large, or a more noetic or inner knowing about the, the, the relevance and the immensity of change that is underway now. And you're somehow tuned into that. It doesn't mean you understand it fully. I don't think any of us understand it fully. So we're at a, a real turning point for humanity, a threshold. And it's being propelled both by the condition of the world and by the presence of other races who are in our world acting on their own behalf, beyond our awareness. The beginning of the breakdown in our social structures, in our relations with nations, right now the world's going through a polarizing effect between the Eastern Bloc countries and the rest of the world uh, that will have significant impacts on the future, for example. But the more that we are diffused or in conflict or crisis, the greater the opportunity for intervention. Because here's a race that can present itself as benign, as here to serve and save humanity from itself, 
Uh, this is being proposed to people that this intervention actually contacts directly, and that they're here to save us from ourselves. And that narrative uh, has been used for centuries by European powers with native peoples. We're here to save you. You're primitive. Uh, you're not in God's grace. We can teach you how to live properly uh, in a holy manner, in a correct manner, which is completely false. So we're now the native peoples of this world facing intervention. So what has our history about intervention with native peoples taught us about intervention? We know what the outcome of that was and the process of that. So for us to see this clearly, this presence in our world, we cannot want anything from them. This is a very important. If you think they're here to give you technology or enlightenment or here to solve all our problems for us, you're a sitting duck for persuasion. You're just an easy mark for those forces in the world. They'll do, they're going to tell you exactly what you want to hear, and that's what you're going to hear. But if we look at the history of our world of intervention, it should be our lesson about life. When facing unknown forces from beyond, as Native peoples were facing over the course of recent centuries, we should remember the lessons of life. This should be our first approach to this whole problem. But most people are treating this as an answer to their prayers, a fulfillment of their dreams. Now they can be fulfilled by forces from beyond the world. If they can't be fulfilled by forces within the world, by humanity itself, that along with the loss of faith in human leadership, human institutions, human religions, um, we're breaking down in many ways as a united and cohesive uh, world of people. And that is a prime environment for intervention. This is how intervention has been successful in history. This is not a Star Wars universe out there. Those forces in the world are not military. For in our part of the universe, which is highly inhabited, invasion is not allowed. If you want to gain access to a world, you have to gain access with that world's compliance and seeming acceptance. I mean, I say seeming acceptance. It doesn't mean it's total acceptance. But we're allowing this force to be in our world. So from the outside looking in, it looks like we are not really resisting it. And they need to establish their own human leadership in service to them to govern us. The need for a proxy is much a greater. A proxy, a exactly. A fully functioning so proxy So it's not statement. like they can be here and rule us, but they need to have really a dominance over the direction the world's going. First, they want to preserve the environment for themselves because in the universe, environment is the most important thing. And if this splendid world is such a rarity, then its environment is the most important thing, far more important than we are to a foreign power. We're important because we can help that foreign power establish themselves here and be able to utilize this planet as they see fit. People don't want to face this because it's not doesn't fulfill their dreams, their desires, there's no escaping into the universe for peace, happiness, or glory. You know, the universe is a tough environment, tougher than this. Competition in the universe may not be military competition, but tremendous competition for resources. Because the higher your level of technology, the greater the resources you must acquire, some of which you can't even get on from your own planet. So the acquisition of resources is a part of even the most advanced levels of life technologically. Not spiritually, but technologically. And the other thing is, you never confuse spiritual development with technological development. Right? People make this mistake. They try to make everything one thing, but they're different. They're not the same. In fact, they're totally not the same. Technological societies can be spiritually dead, but be very powerful in what their technology can do. And likewise, spiritually advanced societies may have very low or limited levels of technology. When you think of a spiritual environment like a monastery, it's a low level of technology, right? Intentionally low, okay? Purposely low. So we have to separate these two things, and we make a critic, some critical errors in discernment. You know, I think of AI here. AI is kind of the next amazing thing that's going to revolutionize everything, right? Um, and yet the alarm bells are going off in a massive way. Uh -huh. Contact could be seen as the next amazing thing that's going to revolutionize everything or bring peace to the world or heal the divides among humans. But is it? 
And, and <laughs> question number two, why are the alarm bells not going off? Because by and large, you rarely hear people talk about the prospect of contact with forces from beyond our mm -hmm. world as a possible threat. They've, they've gone to the total conclusion that they're here yeah. to either save us, to educate us, to learn about us, whatever, whatever the altruistic right. goal is. So but why, why aren't those alarm bells there? Hey, people want to be happy. They don't want to be troubled. They don't want to have problems they can't answer. The government doesn't want to talk about it because it's a problem it can't answer or it can't answer to its public. I mean, no government's going to tell their people we're facing competition and adversaries in the universe for which we have no defense. That would crash your economy. That would create chaos. People would, I mean, you want to talk about fear and destruction. I mean, my goodness. So this is, this is a very big thing, and you can't just have simple answers regarding it. It does follow in natural patterns and historical patterns. We should assume anybody who comes to a world that is so rare and beautiful that we're degrading are here for this world. And we're just a feature of the landscape as far as they're concerned. Never, cons you know, when people are isolated in the universe, they always think they're very important in life, that the universe revolves around them, that anyone who would come to their world would come to help them, uplift them, or save them from their difficulties. But this is the product of isolation. So you have the need for security and happiness at one level. It keeps us thinking that things are actually better than they are, or considering this in a positive way, because if it isn't positive, that's just almost too much for people to deal with. That would be the responsible way of dealing with it, at least, particularly at the outset. Let's, let's make sure this is not a threat before we consider that it's a good thing. And let this presence in our world demonstrate their, their value, come forth, state why they're here, what they're doing. Let us give our approval. This is our house. It's not here, their, their house. And never confuse the extraterrestrial with the divine or the spiritual. That's another big error that many spiritually minded people make. That's trying to make everything one thing, you see? And life isn't like that. Everything isn't just one thing. You can't have one answer for everything. So separate the extraterrestrial from the spiritual always. Our, our recent history is an example of that. In 1936, Nazi Germany was the most powerful technological country in the world. And look at where they were coming from. So technology is just power. It's power and domination. It's, it serves good purposes initially. It serves many good purposes. We all rely upon technology to maintain stability and everything we need to live. But technology beyond that becomes, like an AI, begins to tell us what we want. There's evidence that AI is already doing that, controlling our decisions. It's telling us what to choose between. It's telling us what to value. Right. It's, it's actually controlling our, our whole realm of decision making. It's kind of, a, it's kind of a small example of entering an arena that we really don't understand and aren't fully equipped to deal with. It's a small example of stepping into the universe where we're making contact with one, a dozen, two dozen races out there. And we may jump to a conclusion or we may you know, project onto them our human, spiritual, or religious values, but mm -hmm. we have no idea who they are. I mean, listen, if you saw craft in the world that are flying around, you should be like, what the hell is that? Instead of being excited about it. They understand us. We've been studying for a long time. We've been broadcasting the universe for at least 100 years. Through radio, television, everything. It's all going out there. So they probably know more about our, they may not understand how we think and how we feel, but they certainly understand our psychology and our decisions and our behavior. So we know nothing of those, of that about them. And they're not going to reveal anything about that to us. So I, this sounds incredibly challenging, but I want to make this point because once you get over the fear and anxiety, and this may take a little time, you will see this is the one thing that you can unite humanity. We will not unite over the environment. We will not unite over food, water, and energy. We will not unite over ending poverty. We will not unite for any other reason than to deal with a force that threatens all of us equally. 
And it's not going to threaten us militarily. It's going to threaten us because it's in our environment, affecting our minds, emotions, our thought, and our behavior. It's power in the mental environment. Something human beings, we know something about that because we use advertising to try to persuade people to want to buy things we want to sell them. But the mental environment, ooh, that's really something else. And that's the environment of thought and the power of thought and the power to persuade thinking through means that are very subtle and hard to recognize. We do that through media with people. We try to control what they want and believe, but this is at another level. And so how they're influencing world events, how they're influencing you know, the, the swell and the sway of politics in different countries is very hard to point your finger to. You know, there's nothing you can say that's the intervention. Mm -hmm. But you can see the, the overall kind of sum total of its effect, which mm -hmm. is this increasing division, like you said, and this fracturing of what were pretty stable societies. Yeah, that's right. So, so let's talk about that, yeah, if you'd is, like, how, how, how to thwart that or how to, to at least protect oneself. Well, we have a deeper intelligence within us, which I call knowledge because it has to do with our ability to know things incredibly without evidence even. Uh, it's an innate intelligence within all of us. Um, most people experience it as perhaps intuitive experiences, but it's really, it's way beyond int intuition. It's really who we are. It's who we are eternally. I mean, our human persona is a temporary thing that we adopt from day one and we live in through the course of life. But it's not who we were before we came in here. It's not who we will be after we leave. So knowledge represents our innate deeper intelligence and it's not, it's not subject to persuasion in the world. Nothing can persuade it. It really, the source persuades us. It has our divine source. It's connected to our divine source. It is the permanent part of us. Not our bodies, this isn't permanent. Our thoughts aren't permanent, our beliefs aren't permanent, our social structures aren't permanent. And so, with knowledge, you can see things you cannot see with your personal mind. You have to be able to get beyond a purely human viewpoint, or you just can't see this, and you don't even want to. People don't want to know about this. Oh, flying craft, cool, but I don't want to know about that. Right, they don't want to know what it really represents. They don't want to think about it. They don't want to say, hmm, what really is this? And why is it here? And I didn't, who's bringing them here? And why won't they tell us who they are? And See, they want to ask reasonable, important questions and stay with those questions. It's just something is happening in the periphery of their life they hear about once in a while. So this reality of knowledge, which in your work is the spiritual mind within the person, it's, it's just very amazing if and interesting that the spiritual is what protects us in the physical you could say That's like right. it strangely comes back kind of full circle to to the heart of us mm -hmm. at a spiritual level even though the intervention is a very physical event well that part of you that is grounded in knowledge can't be persuaded i mean it's it's literally not it's not susceptible to any form of persuasion whether it be emotional physical imagery anything sound anything it actually, nothing in the world can persuade it. And that's why it holds your purpose and mission in the world. And it holds it for you until you're ready to begin to face it and assume it and want it and have your life come around to being able to engage with that. And it's a process of development, which begins with a real turning point in your life away from just trying to be happy and fulfilled as a person in a world that's kind of breaking down all around you into coming to terms with, hmm, maybe I'm here for a, a bigger purpose and maybe there's something deeper in me that I need to explore. And why do we keep in these feelings about things that are kind of outside the box of what I usually think about or what I can't talk about with my friends? And I know many people who hear our broadcast and maybe hearing it now already are experiencing this sense that I'm kind of, I'm just focusing on a different reality even while I'm in the world. Mm -hmm. Some of these people have a greater community history, a greater community background, and they've been sent into the world at this time because we are facing the greater community, the universe full of intelligent life. This is our great turning point. Nothing will change our future as much as this, by the way. If we don't regard this properly, if we don't make wise decisions regarding this, it will change the outcome for the whole world. It's not a done deal, but it's in process. So this is going on in the world. I mean, this is like not some errant thing that is in the outskirts of life. This is penetrating in. 
to our inner and outer life. It's taking a long time to do it because the intervention is playing a long game. They're, this is a long-term process for them. They don't want to destroy the world. They want to preserve the value of the world. They want to preserve our infrastructure, primarily because they need to use it. They can't live here. They're not going to build anything here very much. They're from very far away. So it's not that they're going to send supplies to Earth so they can build their own thing here. Sounds like we, we've built it for them. We're building it for them. Are we building enough of it for them? So they want to preserve at least some of the humanity for this purpose. So this is a very big thing to consider. And you have to have the heart to do it. I know why people turn away. I understand. It brings up so many questions and so much <laughs> concern, and you feel kind of hope you can get hopeless right away. Some people just drop the ball and say, it's over. What are you talking about? It's not over. It's just beginning. Humanity's proper response to a changing world and to our emergence into this universe of life is just the beginning. Our ventures in the space mean nothing. Really. I mean, it's... <laughs> You know, part we're, of the, we're, we're centuries away from being able to go anywhere, really, beyond our solar system. So it's what's coming here that is the most important thing. What then is to be done? Like, how can you take this out of the, um, the unconscious or mm -hmm. the, the, the unaware part mm -hmm. of ourselves? Like you mentioned, trying to be happy in a world that's falling apart. I mean, we all dip into that. We all try to be happy in the world we know is falling apart. Right. And our neighbors are doing that and everyone's buying right. too much and doing too much and right. trying to be stimulated. And, and it's part of us knows it's a little farcical, like <laughs> you're really trying to have a good time in a world that's on fire. Yeah. And, and you're probably not able to do much to help and it. And you're probably not really okay with it at some fundamental level. Let's face it, rationality is, is a, a framework for functioning in the world that has limited range of usefulness. Uh, when you when you go too small or too big, it, it it ceases to be reliable. So objectivity is at a minimum these days, and scientific objectivity is fine, but it's too narrow. It's too limited within narrow spheres of focus. Um, why aren't all physics physicists interested in life in the universe? I mean, life in the universe is where we're going, but it seems to be almost a taboo place for, for traditional physicists to go, because they just don't want to go there. Well, and it threatens all that they've established <laughs> and in it, the field, or much gonna, of it. And yeah, because so, physics out there is way beyond physics here. And to understand or that... at least our understanding of physics well, uh, yeah, is, but does even, not encompass even, the entirety exactly, of it. Exactly, exactly. So we have these challenges, but you know, challenge is what makes life real, and it's what makes us grow, and it's what makes us strong. And... This presence in the world can make us stronger, but you have to know what it is, why it's here, what it's doing. And this is my work reveals these things. Mm -hmm. And because it's been revealed to me, I didn't make this up. I didn't even want to deal with this in the beginning. I was like most people says, you know, I just don't want to go, to go in that realm. And I knew that we were being visited. I knew it wasn't what people were saying it was, but... Like most people, I just did not, I was re very reticent to even go there. But the revelation that kept coming to me kept taking me there. You kept, you kept having to go here. Not just to understand intervention, but to understand life in the universe as a, as a outpicturing of everything that's happening in the world on an incomprehensible scale. Corruption, destruction, everything. Technology does not elevate you spiritually or ethically. This becomes inner spiritual work now. This is getting off the surface of your mind where we're preoccupied constantly, constantly stimulated, constantly caught up in things, the future, the past, our interests, our problems, our worries, and become, learn to become still and go deeper down beneath the surface because there's many layers of intelligence beneath the surface of the mind. And even to be able to navigate a changing world which is getting ever more chaotic and uncertain, you need knowledge to be able to guide you because knowledge is there to do that if you can receive it, if you can experience it, if you can trust it enough to take a chance to follow it. You know, we know that intuition can do amazing things because we've all experienced it here and there through life. Um, but now you're going to the source of intuition. 
which is a silent intelligence that sees, knows, and acts. It's not fooled by the world. It's not fooled by anything that fools us. It's not subject to persuasion from any force, be it human or foreign. Uh, it is not delusional. It is the only thing in us that can really rescue us from our own lost consciousness, lost out in the world or lost within our own internal uh, turmoil. Yeah. So this is really coming back to who you are. And the need for that now is not just a personal need to have strength, purpose, and clarity in life. It's like, I need to really get clear so I know what I'm doing in this world. So there's an existential need for this that's very profound. It's not like the world is just the world and I'm just going to go off and study spirituality, become deeper and more intuitive and more aware and, you know. We, we are in a survival situation in the world. The intervention will threaten and is threatening our freedom of thought, primarily at this point, and our freedom, period. There's no other world for us. We're not going to get on a plane or a ship or, and go somewhere else. And um, we have competition now in our world. It's behind the scenes and it doesn't look like predom it's predominating, but it's actually very impactful. And it can have real influence on people that it engages with. So I end up have, I've spoken at many conferences where I'm like the lone voice that's casting the warning about intervention, where other people are trying to treat this as a life-saving visitation. Uh, you don't prepare for the universe by, by hoping it's good. You don't prepare for life by hoping it's good. You have to get out there and face it for what it is and how it is. And that's where you become strong, competent, and hopefully compassionate and dedicated to serving others. So in the end, your service in the world is really what it's about and it's needed now as never before.